Hello, how is everyone? Welcome to Adobe Live. I'm Shauna Lynn, and I'm here to do an hour of Photoshop with y'all. How is everyone doing? I see Jack in the chat. I see Wade, Oliver. Hello, everyone. How are you doing? What's new? What's going on? How was your Halloween? Um, so anyone who's tuning in, if you don't know who I am, I'm Shauna Lynn. I'm a children's book illustrator and general illustrator, um, as well as a graphic designer in the Chicago area. Um, I've been working professionally for the last 12 years, and I've been focusing in illustration for the last 10. Um, one thing that I really enjoy doing are uh, greeting cards. I think they're really fun. It's a great way to inject some humor and do silly, silly things. Um, and uh, so I thought it would be fun today to do some photo cards. So I've got a little presentation ready to go. And one of the things I like to do is I create post, I create, uh, I create photo cards for Postable, um, which is a card service where you can, you can pick a card, fill it out, they mail it for you. Um, and you can actually like collect addresses with it and it will remind you when someone's birthday is coming up. So it's really cool because it's a great service and I license my, my cards with them. So I get a little bit of residual income from that and I get to have fun and make cards and I don't have to do the, do all of the uh, advertising and things for that, which is kind of nice. So I wanted to give some examples of photo cards because we're coming in, coming in on the holiday season and photo cards are generally a very common thing that you'll receive in the mail. It's like, you know, family photos and, and the like, um, and you'll generally see them for Christmas. Um, Right now, we just finished Halloween, so it's a little soon to do the Christmas card, but I thought we could do a Thanksgiving card or a general autumn card. Um, but so a couple examples and, you know, why photo cards? Photo cards are a great way to add a personal touch to everyday cards, and they're a great way to share memories and milestones that feel special and personal to the receiver. So you have things like holiday cards. Um, you have, like I said, mainly Christmas, um, but there's Thanksgiving, there's New Year's, there's all kinds of, you know, occasions. Um, you can also use them on save the dates. That's also a very common way to use photo cards. Um, I personally, I really like this one right here that says free cake. I think that is a great way to inject humor. And I, that's straight up my alley. Like if I were sending a save the date of any kind, like I would have something kind of like that. Um, it's also a great way to do baby announcements because you have a new you have a new little human it's a great way to to introduce the human to the world um and then of course you have others like graduation announcements and just general uh photos and such um a few that i have done are these i've done photo cards mainly for postable i pretty much have only done them for postable um occasionally i'll do them for my mother but beyond that it is uh beyond that it's mostly postable that receives these so I get to have fun with some humor. So like they wanted some baby cards. They'll usually email the artists and um, they'll let us know, like, we need, you know, this type of card. We need more of this type of card. We see people are looking for this kind. So there was a point where they really wanted baby cards for like baby announcements. And I was like, how do I, you know, I was like, how do I do this? Like, how do I create something that's kind of funny without it being too, you know, too out there? And I thought it'd be really kind of cute to go, we made this. Um, so we have this little, we made this baby card. Um, and then we have, you know, just holiday cards. I've done some Halloween ones. People don't really send Halloween cards, but they're fun to make anyways, because I love drawing Halloween themed things. Um, oh, and fun fact, this top left Happy Holidays actually ended up on a postable advertising uh, campaign a couple of years ago. So it was all over like New York City, which is kind of neat. Um, a few more that I've done. And then I've also done ones for businesses. And that's another place where you can actually do really well if you want to sell photo cards is to license it to a business to use because they have a very large mailing list um and then you know a couple more the that i've done over the last few years with them i think i've been creating with them since 2019. so i gave myself a brief so our brief is a thanksgiving photo card we need space for one photo we need space for text the client wants leaves and nature foliage and the colors are autumn colors, so oranges, reds, and yellows. And some things to keep in mind. 
if you're creating for a company like Postable, if you're using more than one image, you have to keep in mind how things overlap. So I created a card last year that would have looked really neat, except for the fact that the way that it gets programmed in, parts of the photo would end up overlapping in the wrong holes. So we couldn't use it. I have to still rework it and figure out a way to make it happen. But so if you're creating for a company like that, where you don't have the control over how you would crop an image, um, you do have to take into account how are things going to sit next to each other. So you have to be wary of how things are angled, how things are laid out um, and the like. Don't be afraid to inject your humor. It's really fun to have, you know, just to put your own humor in there because that definitely resonates with people. And I have um, several cards that are just like really silly that I was like, this is a stupid idea that, that people have actually really gone for and enjoyed. Um, and then when you're creating also, make sure you allow the room for the photo so that the elements don't cut off someone. So you don't want to have your, your, your photo with half the image covered by illustration. You want to be sure that there are ways that, that whoever's using it is able to move their photo around so that they don't lose a good portion of their photo. So with that, now that I have just completely unloaded all this on you all, I have a few sketches that I ran with. Um, mostly because I know that we are we are tight for time. So I want to make sure that I have enough time to do everything. But if anyone has a, if anyone in the chat wants to like say one, two, three, or four in regards to which of these you'd want to run with, or you'd want to see me run with, like let's take a little quick like poll, just throw a number in the chat and we can go from there. And while you do that, I'm going to have some water because it's important to hydrate. I see Wade saying, nice, showing Thanksgiving some love. Yes, I feel like Thanksgiving gets gets brushed over so quickly because it's you know sandwiched right between Halloween and Christmas and it just doesn't get the love it deserves. But Thanksgiving's great because you have football and you have turkey and you have pie and family time. Um, and if like, I'd love to, like I wanna know what you guys' uh, your Thanksgiving traditions are because ours is, uh, my dad makes the turkey. I make the gravy. I use my grandfather's recipe. My mom helps kind of make everything else. And then after dinner, we all pile into the family room and we watch planes, trains, and automobiles. All right, I see people drop in numbers in the chat. We basically have two, three, and four. So this is not helping, guys. <laughs> Need a couple more. A couple more people to pick. All right, we'll give you guys a couple more moments. All right, got one or four. CJ says, I like four. Mixed answers. I like the rounded elements, usually always go for a square, but I'm gonna go towards the rounded. I agree, and it's kind of fun because like I don't try to keep my, I, I to a degree try to keep mine fairly square in the, or, you know, square or circular, but I don't, like to make it super perfect. I like it to have a little bit of variance. So, um, wait, do you want to do a poll? Ah, I don't think we have enough people here to like really run the full poll. So don't worry about it. Well, I, I right now I think four is is winning actually. So let's go with four, um, which is actually not the one I thought people would would go with. So this will be this will be fun. So I'm going to select this. I'm going to copy it. And then I'm going to go into my document that I've already set up. Um, and so what I have done is I have a document ready to go. If I were to, you know, do that from the, from scratch to show you what it is, is I'm working at 5.25 by 7.25 because you got to keep a bleed in mind. Um, and then I'm working at, I, I, have it at 300. I'm actually going to change it to 350 because I like working a little bit higher. And that's just personal preference. Um, generally, if an image is larger, I can work at 300. But if it's like five by seven and I want room for things to be able to be increased in size, I, I'll work a little higher DPI. Um, so we have this, we've got this branch, we have down here, this would be the text. And then we have some leaf elements. 
So what I'm gonna do to start is I'm actually gonna create where my cutout is. So I'm gonna take the opacity down on this and I have I have some photos ready to go. Um, set that to multiply real quick. So I have some photos ready to go. And these are just sort of pulled from Adobe stock. Um, I've not licensed any of them yet. When we decide on which one to use, I'll license it and we'll have it ready to go. But we've got a, a few options to work with and I can what I can do too is use these sort of as my my barometer and my test, you know, my little test to make sure that a photo will fit within the the shape I've created. Um, so we have a, a few from Adobe Stock and then we also have Teddy, who I generally run with on anything I do. He's usually my, who I use to decide how things are working, but first I'm gonna go and do my, uh, go do my, my layout here and then we'll go from there. And what I'm gonna do is just draw my outline and then I'm gonna select it and we're gonna lay down a color and create a mask. So, oh, and first actually I'm gonna go and I'm gonna throw in a, let's put some guides up just so, just so we know where everything is. So my margin is gonna be 0.125 for all of these. So we've got guides, so I know where my bleed is. And then I'm gonna lock my guides because I have a habit of accidentally grabbing them and moving them. All right, so I'm working on a new layer. I'm gonna create. Create our little opening here. And if anyone has questions, feel free to ask. Um, I'm happy to answer them. And as I create too, I may do adjusting to the, to this, you know, cut out the opening that I have. But for now, I'm gonna do the edge of it along this branch just so I can hide it behind there. All right, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the magic wand. I'm gonna select inside of the, that didn't work like I thought it would. All right. A color and then we're gonna see what I need to do to, to fix this. Yeah, it kind of looks like, the outline kind of looks like a little ghost. All right, if I turn that off, I got to, I'm inversing that and then oh, the fill layer, so I can't. Okay. So we're just gonna, we're just gonna clear it out. Part of this is the brush I'm using. So that makes things a little difficult sometimes, but. I'm doing, so as I'm doing the complete wrong side of this. This is normal. This is stuff that happens even when I'm not live on, you know, live on Adobe. You get to watch my mistakes. I'm gonna rotate. Hello, Alessandra, how are you doing? Um, Shabon, I hope I said that right, says, are you drawing with a tablet or with the mouse? I am using a tablet. I have a Cintiq. Um, I would not be able to do this with a mouse. I am not that, uh, I'm not that coordinated. There was a brief period in my life where I could paint with a mouse, but that was, 
That was many, many moons ago. It was, aka, it was, it was over 20 years ago. Control Z is a lifesaver. Yes, it is. Oh, it so is. All right. I'm going to bring this behind my sketch so that my sketch is on top, ready to go. And I'm going to briefly turn it off just so I can show you guys what this looks like once you have a photo behind it. So you can see what will happen is you'll have this photo that that can pop into your into your shape. And right now, these are all looking pretty good in terms of placement. I love Teddy Bear. I'm going to leave him up for now because I just like looking at him. So what I'm going to do for the time being is I'm just going to turn the background white um, because we're going to just clean up this sketch a bit. Grab my brush. I'm gonna rotate. I'm going to take my sketch down in opacity a bit more. So... I know that this is going to be a branch. And if there's other elements you guys think I should throw in here, let me know and I'll see what I can what I can make happen. Shabon says, I have an old tablet. We'll try it again. Yeah, I used a um, a Wacom Intuos for years. So it wasn't until about 2016, I think, that I ended up, I was able to get a Cintiq. Um, because up until that point, they were just not, they they were not cost feasible at all. I'm going to change the color of my sketch so you can actually see it. Um, like they, the cost for them was just too high and they didn't have um, the 13 or anything yet. So once they released the 13, that was my first Cintiq tablet. Um, I ended up uh, going from, but I went from going, I went from a mouse to an Intuos tablet. So I were you were drawing down here, um, but looking up at your screen. So I was actually very good at that. And I use that a lot of times as well for photo editing um, because it made things really easy. And I was able to get a more accurate mark than I could with a mouse. And especially because it was pressure sensitive, it allowed me to, to work very efficiently. I had coworkers that used to call it my magic, my magic tablet because I was able to convince my my boss to buy me one at work because I was toting the one I owned back and forth and uh was kind of getting tired of it because I didn't I didn't like having to you know remember to bring it every day and remember to take it home. So she I did convince them to like buy me one for the office. But I had coworkers that would come in and they'd ask for like a photo edit at night and I pull up whatever file it was and make the edit and just like, I just love watching you work with your magic tablet. But then I switched to a Cintiq and I tried to do the Intuos again at one point and I, my coordination's off. I can't do it anymore. I'm sure if I went back and I really, you know, worked at it, I could do it again, but I much prefer working on a Cintiq or a um, uh, iPad. All right, so we've got a branch. So what that's gonna do is that's gonna overlap the photo just a little bit and that allows, that gives a bottom base to the frame for this, for this photo card. And then, and we want to add some leaves and what's going to happen with these is they're going to look like they're popping out from behind uh, the the uh, frame. But what you're going to end up doing is you're going to put a mask on that on that layer so or on the group um, so that it 
masks masks out where the frame needs to be opened up. What brush are you using? Um, this is a brush I've made. I went into a deep dive this last this last year because I've been in a major creative block. Um, excuse me. So I've not made a ton of work for myself. I've done client work, but personal work. I've, I've got a lot of things that I started and never finished. And, and I was in the process of like figuring out kind of like how to push my style a bit more. Um, and I've always wanted to have more of a bit of a painterly look, like a little more looking like wash and stuff. So I, uh, I spent most of this year making a lot of brushes. Um, and a lot of it is like iterations where it's like, I changed like one small thing and created a new brush out of it. But so the one I'm using right now is one that I call gouache paint. And it's the one thing that's really cool about using, um, me rasterize the layer style so that it actually shows that it, it shows it doing this. Um, one of the really cool things with, with the brushes in Photoshop is that you can create brushes that have a bit of color variance to them so that when you're working, I'm not sure how clear this is going to show up for you guys. So I can always, you know, go really make, make one that is just really exaggerated, but you end up with these different, just slight color variances, which help mimic paint a bit better. And so one thing that I love doing is I love playing with the color dynamics in the brush settings. And so this particular brush is set to a hue jitter of 2%, um, a brightness jitter of 2% and then a purity jitter of 5%. And just what that does is it every stroke, the color will change just slightly based off whatever color you're using. Um, I've got ones here that like this one's a 2% color change, but that also includes the saturation. So there's going to be shades that are going to go a little more on the gray side rather than staying in that same color family. Um, and then this one is 2% on everything, but then 5% purity. Uh, pine cones or acorns. Yes, we can do. We'll definitely have acorns for sure. I was thinking maybe some like little like autumn berries. Um, mistletoe would be cute, but we're doing a Thanksgiving card. So if anyone's just joining, we're doing um, holiday photo cards. We're doing a Thanksgiving card and we're creating it in Photoshop with illustration and currently a photo of my dog. Um, I have I, I was showing people earlier. I've got other options as well for the images that would go within this card just so that you can double check that 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 your frame works properly um but i have this thing where i like to stick teddy into whatever i can stick him into so you guys get teddy We're going to do some. And we voted as a group to figure out what. What sketch to go with. I had four sketches available. So here we'll do like. Some little berries. Maybe here we'll do. And what's kind of fun too is you can. You know, we'll have some of these coming out from behind the um, frame, but you can also have elements that overlap the frame. And that's just a matter of making sure that you draw um, some, like what you want behind the frame, you draw on one layer, and then you draw what you want on, on top of the frame on another layer. An acorn. We'll go this way. Okay. 
And I don't know yet if I want some of these elements to go off the page because what's going to happen is this is all the bleed. So anything that's here is going to go away. So I don't know if I want elements touching the edge or if I'm going to shrink it down a bit, but we'll see how how that goes as we're as we move along. We can change stuff as we go. And the thing with photo cards too is you can get several cards out of one design because all you have to do is switch up the colors. So I have a few that are available on Postable that are the exact same design. And the only thing that's different is they're different colors. Alessandra says, can't believe holidays are approaching already. Where the, did the time go? Yeah, I pretty sure I just like blinked and all of a sudden it's like near the end of the year. I don't remember much of what happened between point A and point B. I don't know if that's the case for anyone else, but I definitely feel like I don't recall what happened between point A and point B. I'm not the microphone's picking up it hopefully it's not but teddy is under the chair that's behind me like he went under under the chair and he uh is currently scratching at the carpet to get to make a comfy spot i call it his little hidey hole because he loves to just go hide under there uh tanya says do you offer memorial cards i don't have any yet um but i believe postable might and if they don't i will absolutely recommend it to them um, if they have them, they're going to be under sympathy cards. Let's add an acorn here. And we have our branch and then what's going to happen is we'll have text right here. So if I turn off the original layer, this is what we've got. I'm going to add one more leaf here. And then what I'll do probably as we go through is I'll add, you know, little dots and things because I love to make use of all the app, absolutely all the space that I can. But, you know, cards in general are a really good way to to show, you know, different emotions, show the range of the work you can do. Like I said, I like to inject humor in mine, but there are situations where I would not do that. Um, and that would be the case of something like a memorial card. Sorry, it is 37 degrees here today and I have the heat on and my throat is so dry. <laughs> okay, so we've got this. We got our little teddy bear. I'm going to turn him off for now so that I can focus on the colors. And then what's going to happen is I'm going to change the color of the background here. Because I said we're going to do, you know, we're doing a Thanksgiving card. So I want to use some different shades of like orange and red and um, yellow. I really like this green. I don't think it's going to work, but I'm going to... Um, I'm duplicating my layer just so I can keep that green on a different one in case it works later. That might work. So this color might work. We'll see. Um, I also want to note, because what I'm doing is I made a shortcut key to access my foreground color palette. So over here, you have your foreground and your background um, in the full panel. And I, when I'm working, 
I was getting annoyed just ha- like going and having to double click every time I wanted to change a color. I have to go up to the um, up to the color picker up in the corner here. And so I set a shortcut so that if I hit the shortcut key, just I hit N, um, it'll pop up my foreground color picker so that it's easy for me to just grab and go. So that just it's a that's just a, a sketch hack that I use. So I'm gonna set this to black just so it's easy to see and I can color it. And then my sketch is gonna go under or my my actual drawing is gonna go under my sketch so that I can see what I'm drawing. So I'm creating a new folder and we're gonna start with some of the we're actually going to start with the branch and get that one out of the way. So I've got this brown. I want to pull something that's a little richer. And we'll see. It may be too dark against the background. We'll find out. But we're going to paint this in and just make it look really nice. It says happens every year. Yeah, the, the blink and you miss it years. I mean, truly, it really just feels like I, I don't know where this where this year went. Like I remember, you know, there's I remember some of it. Like I had, you know, I went fishing with my dad over the summer for a few days. Like I remember that. But that was back in July. And it was like, I think as soon as August hit, that's when it was the blink and you miss it time. Because I ended up, I have been on book deadlines ever since, um, ever since like late summer. So I like, I sent one off a few weeks ago and had another that I have to send off in, on December 1st, I have to send it off. And I'm going to be out of town for a wedding for a few days in mid November, you know, this month in the middle of it. So I have to bring my work with me because I'm gonna have to work um, from my hotel room. But I uh, I just, I, I feel like I hit, whenever I'm in a deadline spree, that's when I can't keep track of my days anymore because I have a bad habit of not shutting off. Um, I will just, I'll work from the couch. Uh, and that's why it's even more important to make sure that you prioritize your health and your well-being. So I've, I try to make it a priority at least two to three times a week to take my lunch hour to go over to the ice rink and skate, um, just so I can be around friends and get some physical activity in, but also force myself away from my computer and away from a position where I'm hunching. Though we are also now in the, we're now in the, in the period where it's, it takes a lot. Um, it takes a lot of, uh, I don't want to say convincing because it doesn't take a lot to convince me to skate, but it's that time of year that it's really hard to willingly go from cold to cold. Um, because I skate out of an ice rink and CJ actually, I think would probably know about where this is. Um, but I skate out of a rink that's in a, in a strip mall. And the rink does not have great insulation. And so in the winter, it's freezing outside and it's just as cold, if not colder inside. Um, and so it, it's just very painful to go and, and skate. But even the rinks around me, there's a lot of, there's one that it's, it's hit or miss. Like sometimes it'll be really warm and comfortable. And then other times, like I did a workshop there where it was so cold that every one of us was in a parka and half the people took their skates off and stayed off the ice because no one, none of us could feel our feet. So, you know, it's, it doesn't take much to convince me to skate, but it takes a bit to get me to go, to go from cold to cold. Alessandra, oh wow, you had a, you had a, you definitely had a roller coaster of a year. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. That's not easy. Sounds like it was a lot of, a lot of up and down. Yeah, I, I truthfully can't even remember what happened in like 
anytime before July, I truly, I don't remember much of it. I know that I went to Creative South. Like that's, I went to Creative South. That's one thing I accomplished this year, which is something that I, I like to do every year because I truly enjoy it. And it's a conference that I love. How are we doing on time? Okay, I'm good still. But uh, yeah, this, this year went quickly, but I'm looking forward to the holidays. I, I love the holidays. I think it's a really fun time of the year. It's, um, you know, I'm, I, I love living up here where I live because I grew up in Florida where we didn't have seasons. So like you prayed to have a um, slightly chilly overcast day on Thanksgiving down in Florida. And up here, it's nice because it's kind of a given that I that we get that, and it's um, it makes me really happy because it's you know it's open window weather, so you can have the windows cracked open. You walk outside and you get a really crisp um, autumn day, and then you walk back in and you get all the smells of the food. It's great. It's great. So you can see here, I don't know how, if it's showing very well, but you can see the color variance happening in my brush. And that's because I have it set to 5% purity and 0% saturation. And then everything else is at two, everything else being hue and brightness. And um, I also, I forgot to mention to get some of that nice layering effect so that there is a little bit of an opacity. I have transfer on and it's set to pen pressure and I have it at about 93. Uh, 93% and then I have pen pressure at a minimum of 25% and so that will allow my brush to have these nice little overlaps where they're not it's not fully opaque but there's so there's just a little bit of transparency so if I turn that off you can see like I'm not entirely sure if I like the background with this color with these colors now that I'm seeing it, so let's go, go change it up and see what we can. Like that's kind of nice. And then I'll add some texture to the branch, but that may work. And if it doesn't, then we go the route of, we do a cream color. So this is our, if nothing else works, um, Actually, what's interesting too here, you can see with this, with both of the colors on, you can see that this is not a perfectly um, opaque circle or shape here. So what I may do is I may lasso tool it uh, near the end so that we can really make sure that it's clean. Wade says, uh, yeah, seasons are actually nice. Yes. Only thing I don't like is this, this fall has been a lot of, um, it's been a lot of weather up and down where we would get, it would, it would finally drop into like the fifties and then two days later it'd be 80 again. And I was just like, I just wanted, I just wanted to shout at the, you know, shout at the atmosphere, just make up your mind. Um, because I dealt, I have dealt with more sinus pain in the last few weeks than I have it all year. Seasons are great here in Nashville. We get twelve of them. There's this, there's this running joke in Florida where it's like, you know, you've got um, summer, fall, summer, still more summer, hurricane season, <laughs> and it just keeps going. And then it's like two days of winter, and then you're back to summer again. I will say though, like one thing I love about summer, like summer thunderstorms, and we always had really good ones in Florida. Downside was if you, uh, you know, it, with it being as hot as it was, um, it would storm and then it would just be humid. It would just, it would then be like walking out into a sauna. It was awful, but yeah, but if anyone has uh, if anyone has questions about what we're working on, if anyone here is joining and you missed the first part of the stream, 
we are making a holiday photo card. We're doing a Thanksgiving themed one. And then we will be, I'm gonna see if I can get it done. We're, you know, we've got like 15 minutes. So my hope is like, we're gonna rush this a little bit. And I may just ignore the fact that I'm going over my bleeds for now. Cause what I can always do too, is if the, if, if I have a piece where the background itself isn't textured, it's easy to expand the, the, uh, expand the canvas just a bit more and just add the color there and give my piece more breathing room that way. We've got, I'm so happy with these brushes though. I've been using them on everything lately. Just because I love having that color variant so it makes things look more painted. And I just think that's so fun because I have been trying to achieve that for I don't know how many years now. I'm gonna take this so I can finish up my little leaf here. Does anyone have anything planned for your for your holiday season? Um, does anyone make their own Christmas cards? That's what I want to know. Does anyone make their own Christmas cards? Because I made my own one time. I just never get around to making them is my problem. I'm really bad about it. Um, but I make my mom's because she loves sending out Christmas cards. And then she but she also loves sending out cards that have my art on them. And uh, so this year I have, we didn't do one last year, we ran out of time, but this year I have to get one, get one done. Cause she, uh, last year, I mean, last year we just didn't have time, but I always wait for her to give me you know, an idea of what she wants. Um, and usually it involves cardinals cause that's her favorite bird. But she took this photo last year, we got her for Christmas, this um, bird feeder that had a camera and she opened it up one day to this to this picture of a cardinal and the thing that it had snowed so there was snow all over the bird feed and he had just pounded his face into the snow and so he was it was a cardinal with his face just covered in snow and that's what she wants is her christmas card so i have to figure out how to how to draw that oliver says i used to make my own cards but not done for a while I find it, you know, is it like just because it takes time or is it, you know, we're our own worst critics. So I know for me, mostly it's just, I'm not happy with what I've made. So I don't end up getting them out. One thing that's really cool too is, you know, like I said, I'm making this for Postable, so it'll be available up on their website, you know, in the coming coming days. Um, it's a little late in the year though for me to be doing these. Generally, when you're making um, holiday cards for companies, um, you start much earlier, like July. Um, I was telling my friends today, I finally turned on Christmas music and that's a feat for me because Normally, I have started listening to it around August. Um, and that's mostly just because if I'm doing work for a client and it's Christmas related, I need it. I use it to get my brain in the right headspace to create for that. Um, but yeah, so <laughs> normally, like if I'm creating Christmas cards for Postable, I will have already submitted a bunch of them. And uh, this year I have I have made five and I submitted them already, so they're up. But I want to make more and I just haven't had time to make more. Um, but I have to get them done in like the next few days if I want to make sure that they're available for the Christmas season because they're already advertising Christmas cards. CJ says, Christmas music is 
appropriate any time of year. You, I like you. Um, I, yeah, I feel like you can't really go wrong. Um, my best friend used to make fun of me because I, you know, it would be August and I'd have Christmas music playing, but it, you know, it brings me joy. Uh, that is basically the exact same color I already used. Wow, that, uh, how can you tell I like a color? There we go, that's better. But yeah, I worked for, um, I used to work for a, a fashion company and August was when we started thinking about um, our holiday catalog. So it was like holiday photo shoot. So we had to like start preparing in August. And so your brain was already like three seasons ahead. So by the time Christmas came around, I my brain was on Valentine's Day. And to some degree, it kind of that kind of sucked because I felt like by the time Christmas came around, I couldn't enjoy like anytime the seasons hit, I couldn't really enjoy them because my brain was already, you know, in the next year. McCorn says, we did a full stop for a few years now, I was getting out of hand, and I was always the one who had to do all the writing. Oh, the Christmas cards, yeah. What we end up doing, actually, is we do a, um, when we get them printed, we have, we just, my mom chooses a message, and I hand letter the message, and then she just signs it, and sometimes we don't even, like, have her just sign it. Sometimes it literally is, like, already printed and signed. And so all she has to do is stuff them in the envelopes and address them. And the envelopes already have our return address printed on them. So you just, you make shortcuts where you can. I feel like I need one orange leaf over here somewhere. So I'm going to go over, I'm going to erase this yellow one real quick. And I'm going to switch that to an orange leaf. Because life is about balance. And then I got to do the berries and the stems. So we're going to pull the stems from this brown. Okay, I've got to like wrap this up very shortly. So I want to make sure that I, I want to get this so that I can show you guys what I do. I'm sorry, I just hit the microphone with my with my pen. My apologies, people. So we're gonna do that. So most of these are gonna be covered by the, they're gonna look like they're popping out from the edge. So right now I'll show you what I'm gonna do and then I'll and then I'll do the finish from there. Um, we'll turn off this for now. Because what I want to do is add a little bit of, of detailing to where I, I line the edges with a darker color just to give it a little more depth. Um, and then in this case, because I don't want this branch to get cut off, I'm actually going to move it out of my folder. I'm going to collapse my folder and then I'm going to take the mask that I already have down here. I'm going to click on it. I'm going to hold Alt. And I'm going to drag it up onto my group. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna apply the mask to my group. And then what I could do from here is I could selectively go in and decide, you know, selectively go in and like where I think overlap could be cute, paint it back in. Because what's going to happen is because this is a transparent layer, it's not going to affect the placement of the photo itself. So the photo will still be within that mask. So if I turn it on, it's still within the mask without being blocked. So it's a little easier to see with this photo. So that way you can see like how you get some selective overlap elements. And then when I would submit this to Postable, what I would do is the background would get turned off so that 
they get a transparent, um, I would send a transparent TIFF file to them. And then I have, would be providing them with a stock photo that they provide you with stock photos. You put a stock photo in to show what it would look like. And then you have live text at the bottom and you send it to them and then they format it to go online and then it can be customized from there. So while we are doing this, yes, that green would have been pretty, but it would have been too much. But it, you can tell it changes the whole vibe of the, of the card itself, which is kind of neat. And then if I were to do the, see, like the tan works, it's a good like default, but it doesn't, I feel like it just doesn't do anything for the, for the overall image. So now I'm gonna go back in here. I'm gonna create a new layer. I'm gonna start adding my little berries in. And let's do some pinkishly, pinkishy red berries. That might be that might be a little dark. Let's go just a little lighter. Um, color theory is really fun because a color could look like it's light enough, and then when you put it on a different color, it will look way too dark or way too light. So like even these, like this may still be too. Ah, no, that works with some with some dark edging. That would actually help it. So I think we'll keep that. Wade says, I've missed a few things by prepping for something coming up past the holiday. It's the worst. Yeah, it, you know, it's it's sad because it's like by the time you're like, yay, it's that time. And you're ready to celebrate and have fun. You're like, your brain's already like three months ahead. And you're like, well, well, <laughs> that used to happen in high school, though, too. But I still got to enjoy Christmas. We just started prepping for like the holiday concert in chorus um, in August. So we were singing Christmas carols from like August to December, but we at least still got to enjoy it. I'm gonna do some light cream colored. Little dotty dot things here. If I can give one like major Photoshop hack, it is assigning a shortcut key to your to your color picker your foreground color picker because it just makes life so much easier especially if you're working in in illustration a lot cj you're just prepping for next year See, that's, that's the glass half full side, and I appreciate that. So we're coming up on the last, like, I've got to sign off in a few minutes. So if you have questions about creating holiday cards and holiday photo cards, like, feel free to ask. I truly feel like when you create these, there really are no limits in terms of like what you create because what you make somebody is going to like so even if you it's not you know the card that you're the most happy with someone out there is gonna like it my best selling card um one christmas uh postable had a had a big boom uh, at the end of 2020 for reasons we all know and because no one could go anywhere everyone was sending sending physical cards and i at the last minute created a a car, it took me, I kid you not, 10 minutes. And that ended up being the best seller of all of my cards. I believe that it sold 30,000 units worth. And um, that ended up like, I had, I almost, I had to laugh because I'm just like, I did that. This was a stupid idea one. Like I did this in 10 minutes and, and yet it ended up you know, knocking it all out of the park. And I'm just like, well, I will take it. I'm going to put this file, this layer over the mask for the moment, just so I can make sure I draw it correctly. But, you know, like I said, that's, you know, there is someone who is going to 
like what you make. There is someone out there for your art, whether you think there is or not. CJ says, it's always the ones you don't think are even going to be a thing that go viral. Yeah, it's, I've always heard even too, like with viral videos, it's the ones that you don't think are, like you spend only a few minutes on and you just think are like stupid and aren't going to do anything that end up going viral. And you're just like, why? What, what about this, you know, made people happy? Like my best friend um, went viral on, on TikTok a couple years ago because she lives on a golf course. And so she would collect the golf balls that would end up in her yard. And so she ended up with over a million followers just because she collects golf balls. Granted, a lot of her followers are like 13, but, you know, <laughs> she was, she sent me, you know, pictures as it was happening. And she just, she's just sitting there like, Shauna, what's happening? I don't understand why, why is this happening? Um, you know, then of course you get the trolls that are like, well, why don't you return them to the golfers? She's like, because the golf course is closed and they left them. They're not going to come back looking for their golf ball. All right, so we're coming up on the last couple minutes. So I just want to make sure to tell you guys that if you are hanging around here to stick around because we have uh, Andrew Hawk Rattle and Nick Longo afterwards, they're doing office hours and you should stick around and show them some love. And if you want to see the absolute final of this card, I will post it to my social media later today. Um, I am under Shauna Parmesan on basically every social media handle you can think of or every social media platform. That's my handle. Um, and you can see more of my work at shaunalyn.com. So I guess I will just, you know, I'll draw until I get the, until I get the notification that I got to wrap it up, but I wanted to make sure that you guys know to stick around because office hours is still on. So Adobe Live's not done yet today. Let me turn off this real quick. So you can see kind of like what it all looks like right now. I'm really, I'm happy with how this is looking. I think what I'll end up doing rather than trying to shrink it, rather than trying to shrink it down, I'm going to uh, close it up. Yeah, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to expand the canvas and go from there. But I want to say thank you guys for joining in. I had a lot of fun and I hope you did too. Have a good day. Thank mm -hmm. you.